This is a video on how to create the snail cam for the Unit 4 IED Automata project. I'm going to be making the snail cam in Inventor. Uh, you will notice that we are in inches. You see the, the 3 sixteenths of an inch a tick mark here for the hole. And you're going to notice once again that we do not have a number that's given to us for what the diameter is. It's just giving us the equational relationship of the curves and the objects. The snail cam is kind of an oblong, kind of funky looking shape here. Um, we're going to do this in a little bit of a different way. There's more than one way you can go about making any one of these cams. But the way we're going to go about doing this is through using the parametric equations toolbar in Inventor. And we're also going to be using an arc command for this. So um, we're going to go ahead and start. So we're going to go to Inventor. And we're going to go to File. And we're going to go to New. And again, we're in inches. Make sure we're in the English template. And we're going to make sure that we're in standard IPT for Inventor part. And we are going to say Create. Go ahead and let Inventor load. And as we go back, you'll notice that we have the origin right here, which is where our hole is going to be. And then we have a fourth of the diameter up and then a half the diameter up over the top. So we're going to be placing some points as opposed to drawing lines. And uh, we, can, we can come about doing that several different ways. So back to Inventor. Before we start this part, we're going to go to the Manage tab. When we go to the Manage tab, we're going to go to the Parameters function box. And that's going to load this kind of sheet thing here that looks kind of like an Excel spreadsheet. And we're going to go back to our drawing. And again, notice the letter D here means diameter. And they have not given us what the diameter is. So your automata box might be different than another teacher's automata box. And you might need to change things up a little bit for the size of the cams. That means you're going to create a proportional relationship between the object. And you're going to make some geometric construction based upon just one digit. For us, we're going to call the diameter just, a, just one inch for today. So when we go back to here, I'm going to go down to Add Numeric, and I'm just going to type in the word DIA for diameter, and I'm going to tab over, and I'm going to leave that at one inch. That's how we're going to say what the diameter is. We'll come back later, and we'll take a look at how to change that. The only other dimension that they give you, the only real number you see on here is the 3 sixteenths of an inch for where the crankshaft would go through the middle of this. So we're going to come back to here, and we're going to go to Hole. I'm going to type the word Hole, and we're going to come over, and we're going to go 3 sixteenths. Enter. And so now what we have is 3 sixteenths of an inch. You see that automatically converts it to a decimal value over here. And we're going to leave this here for now, and we're going to say done. We're going to go up to our sketch tab. We're going to grab our 2D sketch pencil, and I want to click on the XY plane. We have our origin right here. Go back to our drawing. You'll notice that we right here have the origin. So real simple, let's just do this. Let's go ahead and just create this small hole together. That'll give us a good place to start. So we can come up to circle. Our circle command and I'm going to click on the origin and as I drag out you'll notice that I'm in diameter because the dotted line goes from one side of the object through the center to the opposite side of the object. If they gave us a radius dimension we could right click and come down to radius and now I only have half that dotted line but I want to be in diameter so I'm going to right click and go down to diameter and all we have to do here is just type the word hole. We told it that the hole was 3 sixteenths of an inch. Once we type hole we hit enter and you're going to see a function right there and there's our decimal 0.188 if I came back up to my Manage tab here in my parameters, it just rounds up here on the drawing sheet, and you can see that's a function now. So we've created that. Good deal. We're going to go back now to our drawing. And you'll notice that up from here, there's a point right here of fourth of the diameter straight up from here. So let's do this. Uh, let's go about doing this this way. We'll use the point command a little bit. So I'm going to come back up to Sketch, and I'm going to grab hold of the point command. And I want to create a point that is lined up right on my y-axis here. Notice on the x-axis it's at zero and my y-axis is straight up. Let's just click and place that on our y-axis and we're going to right click and say OK. We're going to grab the dimension tab and we're going to go from our point to our origin right here and we're going to drag out. And the distance was a fourth of the diameter. We're going to type DIA divided by four and hit enter. And automatically see that went to 0.25. On our drawing sheet over here, it said a fourth of an inch, excuse me, a fourth of the diameter is this point right here. So let's come back here. We're going to click on the line command. And let's just draw ourselves a line up like this. Remember, there's more than one way we can go about doing this. I'm sure as you watch this video, you're thinking, couldn't you have done this or that? And you'd probably be right. But just for the sake of going through and doing this this way, we're just going to click and just place a line that's vertical right here. Because we'll do this exactly the way we see on the drawing sheet. Now from our origin here to the top of that line we just created is half the diameter. So we're going to come back to here. Dimension, origin, top of the line, drag.
drag over, and we're half the diameter, DIA divided by 2. Now one cool thing before I hit enter we could do is we could always backspace and go times 0.5 as well. Same thing. This allows you to get kind of a percentage value. So if it was 37% of the diameter, we could say times 0.37, and we'd have the same thing. And now we hit enter, and look at what we have. We have a function of 0.5, which is half the diameter, and we have 0.25, which is a quarter of the diameter. Works out really, really well. Now we're going to come back to our drawing. So half the diameter is here to here. Now we could create, this looks kind of like a funky shape here, but we're going to go ahead and call this a half of a circle. We're just going to basically take a half of a circle and we'll be trimming some things off this way. This is how we'll go about creating this. So we're going to go to our circle command and click on our origin. And to make this easy, we're just going to snap this right up here to the top. And I'm going to right click and I'm going to say OK. Now we only want to keep half of this circle. We only want to keep half. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to click on the line command. And we're going to click on the bottom of this little line right here. And we're going to drag this all the way down and through the object. And I'm going to right click and say OK. I like dragging through the object so I can trim off and guarantee that this point crosses. I could have tried to stop and snap right here, but I'm going to guarantee this comes across. Because what we're going to do now is we're going to come up and we're going to grab a hold of the trim command. And we're going to come down here underneath and you're going to see this dotted line show up. And when I click, I got rid of that and I guaranteed I have a point right here where this point is now coincident with this circle. Now I come over on the left hand side and click and I just got rid of half of that circle. This is a little bit of geometric construction. We can use this as we go, and it works really well. So we now have perfectly set up that this is half the diameter. We could come up here to dimension and click out here. We're going to get a 0.5, and it says you're over constraining the sketch because we snapped both of these. So we're not going to be placing a dimension on that. Let's come back to the drawing. Now you'll notice the, the snail cam, this right here, doesn't give us like a real, you know, like a dimension for this. So notice this looks a little bit kind of like an orange in a way. It's got some kind of, you know, weird curves to it. But for the sake of teaching this to my students and using the inventor, um, the, the inventor functions, I grab a hold of the three-point arc. And we're going to say that our three-point arc begins here and ends here. And as we drag out, what I'm wanting to see is this tangent symbol down here. You see that little tangent symbol show up? That tangent symbol is the same thing you see right here, this exact same symbol. That's tangency. And that guarantees me that when I see this tangent spot and I click, I have a guarantee now that this is a continuous line. There's no bump here. It doesn't go through this at one point. It wouldn't curve in here or curve out there. These meet without any bump. So let's say if you were going to roll a marble around this thing, you wouldn't feel a bump right here. Perfect. Now what we don't need anymore is we do not need this line that's right here in the center. So we're going to right click and we're going to say delete. And that right there is your pair cam. So let's go to finish sketch. And let's come back and we're going to go to 3D model and we're going to go to extrude. And another thing that's pretty cool about this is, you know, this looks like a pretty wide snail cam. You could keep it here. But remember, I could I could relate this. I can say, you know, if the I can say if the diameter um, is this, you know, the diameter is one. I always want it to be, let's say, let's come up with something interesting. I always want it to be 32% of the diameter, I can say times 0.32. And automatically I can hit enter, and that will always adjust. So look, if I go back to the manage tab and I go to parameters, I say, you know, the diameter of, let's make it 1.5. Our diameter is too small. It adjusts. Now here's the thing that's weird about the pair cam, though, is that you have to go back each time and kind of change your geometric construction with this. The only thing you can really change on the pair cam is the hole because they didn't really give you a function. So you can go back to the hole over here if I can drag this over. You can change the size of the hole, but you have to go back and change some of the other dimensions for this pair cam. So if I said, you know, the diameter of the hole is actually 0.25, I can hit enter. And it's still going to adjust funky and weird. I can hit undo. Now the pair cam is kind of interesting in the sense that you have to kind of start out exactly where you had it, and it helps you like walk through this. The pair cam has so much geometric construction to it that it's tough for it to completely and totally adjust as you change the object because this is in no way a normal type of shape at all. The pair cam up here, these are kind of some normal shapes, arcs and curves. This snail cam down here really is has to be go, gone back and reconstructed differently if you're going to keep it like that. But I generally just have the students go in and create another one if they're um, snail cam won't adjust perfectly because you'll notice we have this as kind of oblong shapes 
we don't really have a clear defined radius for this. So notice we didn't write an equation for this curve. We didn't write an equation for this curve. Notice how it's just kind of a funky shape here. So this shape can constantly change. So we can go in and change that as we go. So it's not quite as fluid on the parametric constraint side as the other ones are. If you went in and you made the pair cam and the eccentric cam, it's not quite as automatically to adjust. You saw this change a little bit, but you can still go in and create the uh, snail cam this way. It makes it easier. You're just going to have to go back and change your parameters from the, from the very start when you make it. So uh, this has been a video on how to create the snail cam for uh, the Automata Box in Unit 490.